Ah, hello, there you all are. A very, very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, broadcasting to you live on Facebook Live. It's 10 o'clock, it's Sunday night, nothing gets past me. And it is, of course, Sunday the 8th of January 2017. If I haven't seen all of you, then a very, very happy new year to you, of course. Very important. Now, we've only got an hour tonight. We've so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. So I hope you will bear with me. Get to your telephones as well. We're at uh, scotty.mcclue is my Skype handle. And you can Skype in if you've got a point to make. But only if you're mature and you look after your language, remembering we are guests in people's houses right across the world. Very, very important. Alex Duff's watching. Jim McIntyre's watching. Wadge is watching. Superb. George Mullins there, of course. Julianne Scott. Hi, Scotty. Thomas Drakehorn's watching. Joanna K. Jackson from Maine in the USA. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Joanna. And uh, Alex, lovely to see from you. All our favourites are with us tonight. That is absolutely tremendous. Get sharing, telling people, sending messages out. Use Facebook Live absolutely properly. Get sending and sending and sending and sharing and sharing and sharing and telling everybody about it. All your contacts, all your friends. So you want to see this guy, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. He's only with us for one hour every single week. One hour on a Sunday night, 10 o'clock sharp through until 11 p.m., 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time, and about 5 o'clock if you're listening in America, where McClure is, of course, something of a demigod. Right, now, we've lots to talk about tonight. I'm looking at, should we look at a new political party for Scotland? Slightly to the right of centre, pro independence, pro the SNP, pro monarchy, pro wealth creation. So there's one for us tonight. The other thing is, we're looking at high fat diets. Have we been sold a pup by the medical profession since the end of the Second World War? Should we go back to our red meat, to our sausages, bacon, eggs, high fats, low carbs right all right scotty happy new year uh good evening scotty says nicola malone mcphail how are you and two small kisses hi i'm absolutely fine nicola malone mcphail and a happy new year to you scotty did you get the poem from the glasgow cabbie i sent you what did you think yes george excellent stuff michael yule says a happy new year scotty jarvis butler says hello hello to you jarvis dinky do all right scotty says gordon wilson and uh, hello independence says peter mcclear uh, excellent stuff jim stephen gibb hi scotty good evening to you i reckon you should have a theme tune for on here there's a moose loose about the hoose so there you are and uh, give us a wee wave buddy a wee wave to you absolutely uh, evening scotty can you say hello to my son john carroll says joanne menzies or mingers you didn't tell us joanne which one it is douglas william bryce good evening fine sir good evening to you douglas william gavin mccoy high fat low carbs is healthy nosh i agree gavin mccoy i hope you joined us at new year because it was a black tie do so every single one of you who hasn't seen scotty mcclue's hogmanay bash when we saw in the bells with big ben and uh, you know what he's like and uh, of course uh, the uh, new year's special nearly made myself laugh there i'll have to watch hello from Courtbridge, scotty hi scotty says michael mcgregan absolutely hi to you michael excellent stuff i see peter has died where did he go says george uh, barry livingston hi for Cody, the lang tune and lovely to hear from you when you're supping with a fifer you use a lang spoon i think of the fifers are supping with those free the lothians they'll be using a lang spoon and all hi scotty how you doing happy new year says mary carty dinky do to you mary darling happy new year to you of course nay monarchy scotty do you want to be called a subject all your life no ian you're not getting the big picture here, la. If you meddle with the monarchy, you are going nowhere in this country and independence could be kicked into the long grass. So as sooner, the sooner the better that we say, yes, we're backing the monarchy. We're quite happy to have the Queen with us. No problem at all. 
Okay, thank you do, Scotty from Sunny Stornoway. Stornoway, uh, Laurie LD Dev is up in Stornoway there in the Hebrides. What have you been up to this week? Says Wadge. Well, Wadge, that would be telling, wouldn't it? And uh, there is nothing on the telly these days that I want to watch. It's very, very, very frustrating. When I was younger, the television was quite the thing. I was on it myself. So it's and stuff. Here's something Skyping us. Uh, we'll see who this is. Hello, Joanna. Yes. See if she's Skyping us. Are you Skyping us, Joanna? Skype again. There we are. That was Joanna from America Skyping us. You're very welcome. Skype us again, Joanna. And we will talk to you. Dan Cowens there with Dinky Doo. We had the lovely New Year, says Kevin Malcolm McGregor. I'm very sorry to hear that, Kevin Malcolm. And of course, you're a fine Killy fan, eh, both of the Pies and the Football Club. Robert Bain says, can you say hello to my good lady Emma Bain? She is a princess. I don't doubt it for a moment. Here's Joanna. Let's see if we can get her on. Hi, Joanna. Hello, hello, Joanna. Hello, Joanna. She's put the call on hold. Are you there, Joanna? Hello, Joanna. Can you hear us? We can hear you very, very distantly. Hello? Can you hear us? Joanna, can you hear us? Yes, so are you. Very difficult to hear you. And I think everything's working. Everything should be. Yeah. We can just hear you very, very, very faintly, Joanna. Hello? Try phoning again and we'll see if we can get you in again. We'll pop off this call and see if we can get you again. No, Joanna, says Wadge. Wadge, she was there. I could hear her, but it was very, very distant. Dan Cowan says, how long is it since you were in Hallam FM? Radio Hallam, Hallam FM in Sheffield. It will be now. I was down twice. So I was down 97, 98. And I was down again 2002 to 2004. Give us hope, Joanna, says George Mullen. Absolutely. Can you give my cuz a shout out? Cheers, buddy. Michael Pepper Knight says, um, Big Hell from Wigan, Scotty. Big Hell from Wigan, Michael Pepper Knight. Yes, good to hear Wigan on here. No, we can't hear us, says George Mullen. Yes, we know that, George. Thank you. My dad used to Skype me for dog in school, Scotty, back in the day. Yes, a Skype, a scud in the ear. Uh, did you see the... Um, what was that today? Thread on Speak Like Me. Thread on Twitter today, says Kevin Malcolm McGregor. I don't know that. I noticed it. Joanna K. Jackson, I couldn't hear you, Scotty. You sounded like you were in a tunnel very, very far away. It might just be a communication problem with the United States at the moment. Joanna, not to worry about that. Hello, Dean, says Kevin Malcolm McGregor. Dan Cam, you were brilliant. Always used to listen. Oh, that was a fantastic show. The Hallam FM show was absolutely huge. Now, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. If you're wondering who this funny old guy is, it's Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, just for you, saying dinky do live on Facebook Live, Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp, for one hour only. So don't get carried away. Sorry I'm late, Scotty. Held up by a cyclist. True, says Sandy Howden. Um, I doubt it, Sandy, but uh, we can, there's no doubt we can stretch the truth a bit. There are many supporters of the monarchy who also support independence. I don't believe when we went for independence in 2014, there was enough spoken about this. HM would have remained head of the Commonwealth and see more. Hold on, see if I can see some more, Barbara. Um, there we are. Yes. Is there a role for the monarchy if there's an independent Scotland? Of course, there's always a role for the monarchy. Let's try Joanna again. Are you there, Joanna? I am, Scotty. I oh, can hear you just fine now. This is fantastic. I think it was just a small communication problem, and it is lovely to hear you. We thoroughly enjoyed your video of, is it Kimberly, your little one? Kim oh, Kinsley. Kinsley. Ah, yes, yes, we, yes. We my cousin. I had to have some baby time. Oh, fantastic. Bit of baby time. Excellent. How are you, Joanna? We thoroughly enjoy uh, hearing from you in Maine in the USA. I'm doing well. It's quite cold here at the moment. Yeah. Um, 16 degrees, I believe. So Ooh. we're just staying warm. It's 5 p.m. here. So we're getting ready to have some dinner in a bit. Right. So 5 p.m. So I was pretty accurate with my timings then. 
Yes, yeah. for Maine anyways. For Maine, yeah, excellent. So, because you've got different time zones over in the States as well, of course. Eastern Standard Correct. Time. Say that again? You've got Eastern Standard Time in the in the States as well. You've got different different time zones. We do have different. So I'm on the East Coast. We're the first to see the sun in the United States, so we're the first to, to oh, have the earliest. I wouldn't call California at the moment because it would still be probably early afternoon. How beautiful. So are you actually on Eastern, Eastern Standard Time? Yes. Yes, yes, there we are. And does it change? Do you alter it during the year like we do in the United Kingdom? Oh, yes, we have daylight savings time for sure. Fantastic. This is wonderful. It's great to speak to you. How do you think Scotty McClure would go down in the States? I'm not sure, but I'm I'm very much enjoying you. I actually uh, happened upon your show by accident on Facebook. I was just looking through um, the video feeds of different things, and I saw you, and uh, my heritage is in Scotland, so I was very intrigued, and I listened, and I got hooked right away, Scotty. You like it? That's fantastic. Well, tell everyone about it, Joanna, because apparently I'm something of a demigod in America. They say the, pro <laughs> they say the prophet has no honor in his own country. <laughs> well, I'm sharing you. I added you on LinkedIn. I share your videos there. Um, and some people are starting to look. And when you add different videos, I share those as well. And people are starting to like those as well. Fantastic. Listen, lovely to talk to you. Have a great dinner. And uh, love to everybody in Maine in the US of A. Very good, Scotty. And we can chat anytime. Anytime at all, Joanna. I appreciate it. And dinky do. <laughs> Take care. And you, my darling. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, what a great lady. There you go. So calling us in. Now, that's what I call a Skype call, guys. That's how it should be. So there we go. Now then, dinky do Scotty, says Jen Perrett. 16 degrees, lol, try minus 5, says Peter McCrea. Peter's obviously been on an Arctic or Antarctic expedition. If Donald Trump is the answer, how stupid is the question, says George. John Hewson's watching. Now, John Hewson is one of our finest commercial operators in this country. So there you go. Wonderful man and a big in administration, sales and general management in radio. So top stuff. Lovely, lovely to hear from you, John, of course. Post the video afterwards, please. I can't watch this evening, says Gaz Rolly Jones. Yes, it'll always go up on YouTube afterwards as well, Gaz. Brian Paul, Scotty, you've got 39 people viewing. You're not going stateside yet, pal. No, no, no. You don't understand, Brian. We've got 39 viewing right at this second. What happens is that all multiplies up. For instance, last week, there's um, almost 4,000 have seen the show. So it's great stuff. And since we started, we're approaching 100,000 people have seen Scotty McClure on Facebook Live. Now, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's a start. And we're getting on for having a show, what I call a show. Obviously, I'm used to, uh, you're a suck. I'm used to having like quarter of a million per half hour minimum, but we can uh, always uh, build up to that. You're a sucker for a female foreign accent, says George Mullen. Of course, we all are. Oh, hello. How are you? says Andy Brooks. Scotty, would you go on Big Brother? Have you been asked? I could be your agent, 007. I actually got to the final of Big Brother. So there we are. I actually nearly got chosen. And at the last, one of the girls from the company said, you've worked in television, haven't you? I said, yes, a lot. And she said, in that case, you would know all our stuff. And I said, um, yeah, but I'm not going to let on, Anna, am I? And she said, yeah, but it, we can't really take the risk. So that was why I didn't get into Big Brother. I went down and I auditioned at the um, Emirates, at the Emirates ground for Arsenal uh, in London. Fantastic. Scotty McClure, I've tried Skype, but it's not working, says Jarvis. Jarvis, nothing seems to be working when you're at the other end of it. So get it sorted. Well done, mate, says Brian Paul. Absolutely. I got in there and um, that was me, but uh, I didn't quite make it on to Big Brother, but I would have loved it. I think I could, uh, you know, cause an absolute stushy in that house. Uh, I phoned you 20 years ago, Scotty, on the Christmas Kids phone in, says Julie Julie. And of course, we sent the Christmas Kids phone in from 20 years ago out just last week, Julie. So you should be able to see it. Fantastic stuff. There we go. Now then, quick knock down, of course, for the big man. There we are. Better. Oh. <laughs> Looks as if I've been... Uh, in the rough and tumble. You're a champ, Scotty. Keep up the good work, says Derek McLaren. I thank you. 
Yes, all the children that phoned 20 years ago, amazing. And um, footage has just emerged of me reading the news on ITV 30 years ago, incredible. Um, and apparently I haven't changed all that much. I quite like that. Good to see you, Scotty. Happy New Year, says Daniel Joseph. And to you, Daniel. Hello and Happy New Year, says Eleanor McKinnon. Lol, says Ian Walker. Where is Mrs. McClue, says Peter McQueer. Mrs. McClue is not uh, up for, for public consumption, apparently. Mm. Dinky do, Scotty, and a woof to Clyde too, says Jane McDonald. That's not Clyde to the radio station, that is Clyde the dog as well, from Jane McDonald, a wonderful lady. And uh, Catherine the Faden, Happy New Year, Scotty. So there you are, she's got it in Gaelic. You need to do like the road signs, Catherine and uh, Catherine. Is it Catherine? And uh, you'll have to uh, do it in Gaelic and English. James Forbes watching. So fantastic. 100 comments already. My friend thought he had you in the taxi was this week. Would it have been you? So George Mullen, uh, was I in the taxi this week? Not this week, George. No. No, I haven't been in the taxi this week. Uh, quite often, though, I'll ring the taxi and they are there in minutes. It's fantastic. 46 viewers, Scotty, you're getting there. Don't be fooled by all this. 48 it actually is. As I say, almost 100,000 people have viewed these little Facebook live videos. So it's 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 tremendous stuff. It just shows you the appeal of Scotty McClure. It started as an experiment. We did one show. This is show 16. It's only an hour on a Sunday night, live on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock sharp. So I mean, you're not going to get the massive, massive figures until everyone shares it and shares and shares and shares. And then we'll get back to, as I say, maybe quarter of a million per half hour or something like that. Um, so there you are. The number of people watching the video is increasing. 50 are watching. Well, of course, it just depends on who's joining us at the time. Scotty, there was an old Glasgow gang called the Beehive Boys from Cumberland Street. They got their names from a draper's shop at the end of the road. The, there's a sting in the tail. How amazing. Very good, Ian. I was just hearing about the old gangs in Glasgow, the Billy Boys and what have you. And uh, how um, Sir Percy Silito the Chief Constable of Sheffield later to run the intelligence services. Percy came up and sorted them all out. I think you do apologise for missing your last two shows. I was rather busy over the festive period, says James Forbes. You never, ever, ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of life. Uh, when are you doing the phone-in? Doing it now, Brian Paul. So if you're Skyped into Scotty.McClure, you can phone and we can chat. I couldn't get through 20 years ago. Believe me, I tried, says Charles McLaughlin. Uh, Charles, a absolutely, or Charles McLaughlin. Um, absolutely, we had 460,000 calls in one week. It was there on the printout. You could actually see. They didn't all get to air, of course. But, um, you know, at least... Uh, they, they phoned in and it shorted out the network for Central Scotland. Give my wife Linda a shout out, Scotty, says Denny McLaughlin. Absolutely. And uh, so there's a McLaughlin and a McLaughlin. Uh, Scotty, a lot of people are talking about the Scottish NHS performing poorly. I don't agree. The Scottish NHS uh, is uh, the disaster they say it is. Actually, I think it's actually doing well considering see more. Hold on, Sean. See if I can see more. Fantastic. Uh, so there we are. Actually, well, considering thoughts from you, Dinky Doo. Yes. Well, we've got to look at the fact that pre-1948, we didn't have a health service at all. And you had to pay the doctor. If you couldn't afford to pay the doctor, and the doctor wasn't a charitable soul that said, ah, just leave it and I'll get it the next time or whatever, then you didn't get attended to and you died. We had huge mortality. Not only had huge uh, numbers, millions been killed, in the Second World War, the First World War, or the rest of it, you still had a lot of illnesses about your tuberculosis, you had polio, you had all these things. And the NHS, when the NHS came in, Sir John Crofton, um, a man who was a, a distant relative of mine, Sir John Crofton cured tuberculosis. And he was a delightful man, very dapper chap. And um, when, when, when he spoke, he said, people didn't believe that we cured 15 million people, but we did. You know, and that was what uh, what brought in the injections for TB. So the whole health service thing has moved. Now, remember, if a wee one gets a twist in an ankle or something, they're along to A&E with them just to check it all out so it doesn't affect them for life. In years gone by, if you twisted your ankle, you just had to sit in a chair until it got better. So the NHS in Scotland is doing extremely well. 
Of course there can be adjustments. Of course there's always going to be a fight for money. Of course uh, consultants and specialists and GPs could do a lot more if they had more money. Everybody could. But for what it is and for how long it's been in service and for what it's doing, the Scottish Health Service is fan. Fantastic and dinky do to all the nurses and doctors and consultants and specialists and surgeons who are watching this program right now. And a big thank you from the bottom of the heart of all the people for all the wonderful things you've done for us. Any news about going more than once a week, says Steve Burrows. George Raffin's watching, <coughs> pardon me, clear of the pipes. I'm sure Signal Radio comes to mind, says Andy Brooks. Absolutely. And a wonderful time on Signal Radio because. McClure gets networked, you see, very, very popular. It doesn't matter whether it's Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, America, everybody is up for Scotty McClure. I used to listen to you on Scott FM, says we, Jimmy. That was Scotland's finest radio hour, Jimmy. It's been virtually been neutralised now, of course. We don't have Scott FM. Scotty, after independence. Oh, wait a minute. Can I bring that back down? Yes, there we are. What number of programme is it this week, says George? It's number 16, George. Number 16. So there you are. Share, share coming up. Is it a share point? Yes. Can everybody who's watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live right now just give us a massive share out? So share, 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 share your video. Excellent stuff. Uh, so there we are. Thank you very much to James Forbes for uh, bringing the share point to my attention. What's doing well and keeping the NHS afloat is all the doctors and nurses working flat out and giving 120%. Hats off to each and every one of them. G. G. Hamilton, I could not agree more with you. That's why we have... Thank them profusely. Um, <coughs> sip of water. Seize the day. Cup of tea. Mm. You'll see that backwards. It says, seize the day. Quote from Horace, of course. Carpe deum. Um, so there you are. Scotty, after independence, if they bring back the monarchy, then I'm bringing back Cromwell. No, Cromwell was a nightmare. You forget we've already tried to do away with the monarchy. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to do with it in this country by dividing poor old Charles I, a Scotsman, a Stuart, into a head and a body by cowards, a shower of cowards. They couldn't bear to do it till about two o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And there's a black mark on the clock at St. James to this day. So if you look on horse guards, right, uh, you'll see a black mark on the clock at St. James because um, that's the time that the cowards eventually thought they would dispatch His Majesty the King, the late King, a Scot, Charles Stuart, Charles I. We've tried all that. It doesn't work. There you are. He ended up with that idiot Cromwell who caused untold damage to this country. So people just need to sober up, do their history, do their work, understand what they're talking about, and then all of us will be up for the monarchy. Fantastic. Scotty, I hear the new Marvel Avengers movies planned for Glasgow. Can you put in a good word for me with Samuel L. Jackson so I can get a part? <laughs> Fantastic. Nearly missed you, Scotty. The memory's getting bad, says George Raffin. Never ever miss a second. Um, Gavin McCoy says, hi to Tony in Ireland. Dinky do Tony. I'm delighted, Gavin. Can I get a mention, says wee Jimmy. Ooh, let me think about it. Mm, yes, yes, we'll give you a mention, wee Jimmy. So there you are. Not a problem now. Uh, Scotty, I watched the 39 Steps film with various actors. I still think the Robert Donat one, the original, is the best. John Laurie is the old farmer in it. Uh, the late John Laurie from Dad's Army, played Private Fraser from Dad's Army. Um, and he was in that uh, marvellous film, uh, The 39 Steps. When was it? Was it, 19, was it 1934, the first one? See if you can find out when the first 39 Steps go. The other one with Kenneth Moore is very good. And, of course, I enjoyed the last one, Bit of Poetic License, is it? Where are the 39 Steps? The 39 Steps is a... Did I get it right, sir? So there you are. Um, who else have we got? Can I get a mention of Jimmy? Yes, you can. Um, let's talk about nuts and bolts. No, let's not bother.
talking about nuts and bolts. There's Andy Brooks. I'm from Lincolnshire. My girlfriend's from Perth. She's loving this. And she is a little bit more a nos. Wow. Oh, she'll have the wee fish and chip hat, of course. Dunking the biscuits at midnight with a little the little night light on. Fantastic stuff. Excellent, Andy. Uh, we love Lincolnshire. I know it very, very well. Cleethorpes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's Lincolnshire uh, over the Humber Bridge. Does it still cost? Do they still charge for the Humber Bridge? The Scots stood up to the government and they stopped charging for the bridges in Scotland. So we don't pay bridge tolls. And uh, I'm just wondering if you lot can do that down on the Humber there. I love the Humber Bridge, so it's very, very impressive. Just found out I've got sciatica. It's down to my shoes. They're size 9 and sciatica 10. Very good, George. Ha <laughs> ha! Made, made me laugh there. Sean Hornby, you're doing good, Scotty. I thank you, Sean Hornby. An excellent man, a very, very fine agent uh, down in Lancashire there. Everybody share now, says James Fogg. Yes. Share, 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 share. Now, if you've just joined us and you're wondering what on earth is happening, you're listening to Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. If you own radio stations or you own television stations or a television station or a radio station or newspapers, anything to do with the media, feel free to get in touch with Scotty McClue. We'll bring in your audience, we'll sort out your problems, and we'll get your product moving forward again. I spoke to a gentleman down south, and I said, we can put the station on the map, and he said, oh, do, do, it's, it's, it's on the map. I thought, no, it's not. But you don't like to argue with a prospective employer. However, he did say to me that I had a Scottish accent, and that was the reason he couldn't unfortunately put me live on his station what a lot of nonsense so there you are yes you pay for the humber bridge but they've half the price oh i like that excellent stuff so there we go has everybody shared we shared very important scotty mcclue just for you live on facebook live for one hour on a sunday night spread the word now guys sometimes i'll see that a hundred of you have liked a video if you can share it as well so that we're using social media to advantage also if all of you can go on to twitter and follow scotty mcclue if you're on facebook you'll see the several pages there if you can follow these as well then we can build and build and build and build the program until we have a massive phone in program if you want to phone in now you can do we're live with skype and it's scotty.mcclue is the skype handle uh, everyone share now, Sir James Forbes. There we are. Excellent. Let's get this going up. I've lost the connection, says Wadge. No, you shouldn't have. Evening again, sir, says Andy Grant. Dinky-doo. Let's talk about nuts and bolts, says Peter McKeer. Dab, says James Forbes. Now, Dab is an excellent way to receive your radio as well. Digital audio broadcasting. And um, there's lots and lots of muxies there. So if you've got a dab radio, they don't have to be terribly expensive. Then you can, uh, you know, get a lot more radio stations on there. Evening. I meant lol, says Andy Grant. Excellent stuff. Hi, Scotty, says Mike. What are your thoughts on another Scottish referendum? Wait a minute, there's a stop going up. I have to get that out. Scotty, have you heard of red pudding? I think it's an East Coast thing. Shared, gives a shout out to your class. What are your thoughts on another Scottish referendum, says John Edmund. Now, John, I think there will be another Scottish referendum. I think um, the First Minister will know exactly when the time is right for that. There's no point in us getting it wrong. But I did a poll the other day about uh, an independent Scotland, and it got 91%. It was up at 93%. A poll on Twitter. You'll see it there. You can actually go and see it. And uh, it's up at, it was at 93%. And then it settled down. And the final votes, there were several hundred voters on there. So it was a good cross-section of a poll. And um, 
uh, several thousand impressions, many, many thousand impressions. And um, it came out, as I say, it finished up at 91% for independence. So there you are. So it's definitely catching on. Um, tell 20 to tell 20 now, Scotty, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Lynn Finlayson, hey, Scotty, I've just finished work at my care home. I'm feeling tired but wide awake. So I want independence, she says. Two kisses. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, says James Forbes. Absolutely, Gavin McCoy. Let's create a social pandemic with Scotty. Absolutely, get on there, right across all social media. Everybody should be able to see this program live on a Sunday night. Would you go to Spain to work for a station for expats? Yes, of course, George, absolutely. McClue is willing to travel. There we are, loving the show, says Craig Gordon. And uh, also Sandy Howden, you're talking rubbish on Independence, Scotty. Sandy, I never ever talk rubbish and certainly never on Independence. Go on to YouTube and get Scotty McClure talking to John Gaunt about Scottish Independence. There you are. Then you'll find about it. So Sandy, A, I never talk rubbish and B, certainly never when it comes to something as important as the future of Scotland. Uh, you'll be lucky to find a poll after Brexit. They're all going home, says Ian Walker. Very good. Uh, can you shout out to me, please, says Ryan William Rear. Yes, Ryan William Rear. Dinky doo, a big shout out to you, I say. In the song Sylvia's Mother, what was the daughter's name, says George Mother. George, you're a great one for your quizzes. Wouldn't be surprised if you're the kind of guy that uh, does crosswords and things like that. Mark Cruden, have you missed me, Scotty? Of course, Mark. I believe you've been away running for Queen and Country. Fantastic stuff. Um, you know, somebody asked me if I could do a half marathon. Said I could do in the whole bar. Barbara Ann Haig, think of all those grandparents and great-grandparents who enjoy radio and don't go on social media who would love to hear you on the radio. I just believe there are so many people isolated. Let's see a little bit, see more. Uh, so many people... Isolated or lonely, who would love a Scotty phone-in. Get sharing this TV and radios off and get listening. Share, 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 buddy, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Now, Barbara, what I'm going to say to you, there was an old lady on ITN. I shouldn't call her an old lady. She was in her 80s. She was ITN. And she was saying how lonely she is. And I actually put on Facebook, you'll see it there, I said, this is why we need a national radio or television phone-in doesn't have to be in the radio. I could pop up on the telly and do this for an hour every night, you know, between 10 and 11 or what have you. And it means that people can then phone in. If we can get a television company that's got access to their own telephones or something like that, one of these big media companies, then we could easily do that. And it means it's a national company for everyone who's on their own, who's on their Todd, who's on their jack, who's there actually wishing that they had the company, you know, and that was one of the massive, massive functions. One of the reasons, I mean, we had listeners from nine to 99, if I may pinch the line from an old song. Scotty, what did the UK government agree to remaining in the single market? What then for Indy 2? Well, Martin, I think that um, it doesn't matter. Scotland will be independent anyway. That will never be let up. And I was surprised to see your post earlier that you were beginning to get anxious that um, they might be cooling on independence. No question of that. Scotland, it's not a, um, it's not a political thing at all, actually. It's economic. Scotland would be far better off economically making its own financial decisions. So there you are. So I think Indy 2 will always come. Um, who was the old lady, says George Mullen? Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a lady, you can see it, you'll see it on my Facebook page, George. You'll see her from the ITN News. We Jimmy, the last time I called you was on the radio and you cut me off. <laughs> of course, we had to cut people off to let others on, Jimmy. Alex Duff, I to independence, no to the monarchy, equality for all. Well, you need to say yay to the monarchy, Alex, otherwise independence is out the windy. You see, what people are doing, they're mixing things up here. The monarchy are a sideshow to the political discussion for Scottish independence, right? The, the monarchy have done absolutely zero harm. The monarchy are very wonderful. They do a great job for this country. 
And I don't know why people want to get involved in an argument over a side show. It's a side issue, right? Don't want to call the monarchy a side show, but it's a side issue. It's nothing to do with independence. There's no connection between 1603, the Union of the Crowns, 1503, the marriage of the thistle and the rose. There's no connection with these events. Uh, you know, Margaret Tudor and James IV, no connection with these events uh, to do with 1707 and the joining of the parliaments. So we'll not be separating the crowns. That's the whole thing. So support the monarchy and you'll get your independence. Right, I'm eating a Canadian Scotch pie. Uh, it doesn't taste good, says Richard Barnett. <laughs> you need a McClue's pie, Richard. Richard, out in Vancouver there. Agree totally, says Martin. Fair point, Scotty. Uh, yes, guys, Scotty, you'd be better off without Europe or the Union, in my opinion. John Paul Preston. So he's saying go completely independent with Scotland. Then, of course, you could trade with the world, but you need to set up your, your, your trading. Hi, Scotty. Did you send your get well soon message to the Queen after her heavy cold? Of course, Paul McNally. I always send good wishes to the Queen. God save the Queen, says Charles McLaughlin. Tell the SNP about the monarchy, Scotty. They want rid of them. I'm telling them about them. There's two things up. There's Scotty McClue talking about independence to John Gaunt. Get that on YouTube, right? Just put in Scotty McClue, John Gaunt, J-O-N, independence the two of us two clash of the titans it was known as and john and i discuss it. a very very fine broadcaster of course are you a crankies fan are they an embarrassment to scotland certainly not a huge crankies fan and uh, i've actually done some work with the crankies uh, so there we are we used to they used to come down to bottle television crankies are huge fantastic can all the listeners get a wee tune scotty from your boom box cheers buddy says jim stephen gibb yeah, so I might give you a wee tune. <coughs> We've got the box here, so we can always get a wee tune going. Never a problem. Shall I show the box so you believe it? Because some of you go, ah, he's not actually playing that. There you go. And uh, we'll see what we get for you tonight. What would you like tonight? <laughs> That's it. There's Maureen Maguire on Dinky Do. Are the sausage rolls going home? Says Brian Paul. Do you mean on their own? John Gaunt didn't make me laugh, says uh, Sandy Howden. I don't think John's uh, a big, big humorous broadcaster, but you'll enjoy it if you listen, Sandy. And you'll get an education, which is something I've always wanted for you. Uh, you know, if I, if I could get my prayers answered, it would be an education for yourself, Sandy. So there we are. And uh, oh, is it share time again? Hold on. What's happening? Has anybody Skyped us? Oh, share, 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 share. There we go. It's like an early commercial break there. Michael Connolly, what do you have to trade apart from whiskey and gin? Scotland is heavily subsidised by the Union. How do you propose to fill the gap? Michael, let me dispel that myth right now. Scotland is not, 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 not subsidised by the United kingdom get that out of your head that is a myth from people who are frightened of losing scotland from the central government of the united kingdom a complete myth scotland sends 40 billion pounds a year to the westminster coffers they then get a little bit back so it's like giving your mum all your wages and getting your beer money back so they get a little bit back by the Barnett formula, which will hopefully be scrapped quite soon when Scotland becomes independent. That will be scrapped and Scotland will have control. Also, people who have got money offshore, there are trillions offshore, get that money back on shore. Pay your tax in Scotland. If you have a business in Scotland and you're taking money from Scots, account in Scotland, bank with the Scottish government banker. That's what we're talking about. Now the banks, the UK just took everybody's money and bailed the banks out for billions and billions and billions because they'd made a mess of running their business. So what's actually happening is we're borrowing our own money and we're paying interest. 
What would have been a far more honest way to do that is to say, how much is it the banks really need to save them from going under? Some of them we might let go under, others we might save. How much do they need? They need X billion. Right. In that case, let's write out loan notes to the people and the people can purchase uh, loan stock. All right. They can purchase loan stock from the bank. And when the banks are back in the black, they can pay back that money to the people. We had old ladies selling their wedding rings at these little gold stalls in supermarkets so they could pay their electricity bill. That's an appalling state of affairs. That's something that any government should be sorting out right away. People need to have some quality of life, some calibre of life. And you're not going to get that when we're bailing out big business and still paying out massive, massive bonuses to people who are getting entrepreneurial money for very, very poor management. Right? So there you go. Sorry, rant over. Just putting some people right there. The UK government bailed out the Royal Bank. Of course they did, Sandy, yes. Fake pound coins kept the economy going, says Peter McRae. I don't know what you've got is quantitative easing. But what that is, is an exchange for, for uh, valuable assets. So there you go. Scotland trades on much more than whiskey and gin and oil. We also have fishing, cotton, wool, technology, tourism, and many, many more industries. Scotland is actually would do very well on its own. Of course it would. Uh, William Rose is watching. Dinky do to you, William. Malcolm Achorchen. Scotty, if you tell Mr. Howden, hold on. I missed that. Ah, uh, come on back. Anyway, right, uh, I can't get that now. Yes, the UK government bailed out RBS with Scotland's oil revenue, says Martin. You're spot on, Scotty. The unionist media have been trying to pull the wool over people's eyes for years. Well, of course they, of course the unionist media worry. They would lose millions and millions of pounds. Uh, you know, everybody's taking from Scotland and nobody is giving. Do you want a rant? Start me in Glasgow City Council's George Mullen. No, George, I'm not wanting a rant on the City Council. I just had to explain to people that think that they are subsidising Scotland that they are most certainly not. Scotty, why did Westminster change our maritime borders? Are the herring back? Well, there's two things here. I mean, one, there's the seabed, which is owned by the Crown Estates. And also, we need to get the fishing sorted out. You think about all the places where you had a very, very busy, I think we're frozen there, folks, for the moment. We'll see if it picks up again. You think where you had very, very, very busy fishing ports right along the northeast, Fraserborough, the Broch, Aberdeen itself, Bucky, <coughs> Port Soy, Banff, all these places coming right down the east coast, of course. Tremendous stuff. So there we go. We seem to be frozen. Have we frozen a little bit? Are we coming back? Does anybody know what's going on? Tell me if you're watching what's going on, folks. Indiref may be in its... Is it in pie in the proverbials of Jarvis? I don't know what you're talking about, Jarvis. Talking nonsense, of course, as usual. Margaret Bonner. Oh, that's better. Hi, Scotties, is Margaret. Joanna K. Jackson here will come back. Look for the next live video. Are you saying it's all good for Scotland and the rest of the UK? I think it swings and roundabouts. Oh, pal, you're frozen, says Richard Bunnett. Yes, can you still hear me, Richard? Let me know if you can still hear me, folks, and I'll keep chatting on. And uh, if not, then, of course, we can uh, we can move up. Not a problem. Right, uh, time for a share anyway. So there we are. Pal, you have frozen, says Richard. Hello, Richard. There we are. Uh, why do you have to get English money to go to England? The what Scottish money? What's that all about, Scotty? Says Esther Hart. So there we go. Have we frozen, folks? Are you saying it's good for Scotland? Um, yes, we can still hear you. Yes, says Adam M. Fuller. Ah, Adam M. Fuller, lovely to have you back with us, of course. See if you can take down that um, YouTube one we were talking about, Adam. That would be appreciated. The trouble with Scotland is it's full of Scots. Says Josh Raffin. Loud and clear, says Lynn. Well, I'll just chat on, Lynn, and we can do the... Well, this is what they used to do in Parliament, of course. They used to put up a slide of whoever was speaking, and then you heard the voice before uh, television came in. Yes, we can hear your voice. 
so that's fine so that's not a problem so hopefully the picture will unfreeze at some point there we go i shall see right there we go folks okay uh, 